Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Okay, so we're telling the uh, lifetime, we're telling about the activities of the great King Maharaj Priyavrata as described in the fifth canto, Srimad Bhagavatam. So we were telling how Priyavrata had gone to the mountains with Narada Muni and he'd done a lot of austerity there with Narada Muni in the mountains and he was quite attached to being a brahmachari. But his father came there and his father wanted him to come home to take over the, to rule the kingdom. The father wanted to retire, he wanted to take Vanaprast and go into the forest and do austerity. So, there was some discussion between Manu and Narada Muni. Manu wanted the son to come home, Narada Muni thought he should stay with him. So, ultimately Lord Brahma came there and wrote, Lord Brahma resolved the issue and Lord, Lord Brahma said it would be better for Priyavrata to go home and to take up the responsibility to rule the kingdom. But at the same time he told Priyavrata that you, you can always, you can always maintain your position, your spiritual position, you won't lose your spiritual advancement. So Narada Muni agreed that, okay, let Priyavrata go home. And Priyavrata went, came back, Manu went to the forest, retired, and Priyavrata became the king, the ruler. Actually, Priyavrata is not just ruling a, a tiny kingdom, he's ruling the whole universe. because he's the grandson of Lord Brahma. Mm -hmm. So some Manus, some Manus only rule the, the earth, but uh, Swayambhuva Manu, he was ruling the universe. And Maharaj Priyavrata, he, he took over that position in charge of the whole universe. So when he became the ruler, although he was engaged in all kinds of uh, material activities, he always remembered the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord. Mm -hmm. 
之后，从事了物质的活动，但他永远冥想着、想着主至尊主的莲花足。Yeah, he, Maharaj Priyavrata was free. He was he was a pure devotee. Maharaj Priyavrata is a pure devotee. But he took up that responsibility to rule the material world, to to show respect for his superiors. So it's it's proper etiquette to give respect to our superiors, just like in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says the mode of goodness is to show respect for your mother and father. You should also respect, of course, you should worship the Supreme Lord, and you should respect the Brahmanas and the spiritual teachers. And even your parents are not devotees, but still we should respect them. So Priyavrata was a liberated soul. He was not attracted to material things. Priyavrata is already freed from the soul. Freed from material things, he did not attract. But Lord Brahma had told him to take up the job to govern, to look over all the affairs of the universe. And Lord Brahma told him to take up the job to govern, to look over all the affairs of the universe. Just like Arjuna didn't want to fight, but Krishna told him, "No, you have to do it. It's your duty." So Maharaj Priyavrata was—he was the great. He is the highest yogi. And he's showing. That a devotee is not afraid of going anywhere. A devotee can go to hell for Krishna. We see heaven and hell, liberation, all the same. So Priyavrata came back from the, the the mountain to become the the king to become the in charge of the of the all the government affairs, but it was all the same to him. It didn't affect him. Priyavrata 就从山中返回，成为了国王，承担起管理事务。但对于他而言，呃，这是一样的。Just like Uttama Adhikaris, the, the topmost devotees, they come down to the second level to preach Krishna consciousness. So Priyavrata came back, became the ruler, and so because he's in in the materialistic environment, he has to take a wife. So he got married to the daughter of Vishwakarma. And he had together they had ten sons. And one daughter. The daughter was the youngest. So Priyavrata was trained as a brahmachari, so he he can make a good householder. Uh, 
I can live peacefully with his wife and with the children. Family life means you should have a wife. So when Lord Chaitanya was at home, he also had a wife. When the first wife died, then he took a second wife. So Priyavrata, he had, he had, he had renounced everything, but he came back home. So he accepted a wife and he had children. So having a wife and children, that is enjoyment, that is material pleasure. So Maharaj Priyavrata is an accept, he's accepted enjoyment in the material world, but after some time he will also give it up. It's not eternal. You don't remain in mater materialistic family life forever. Successful family life is when you can move on into the next ashram and retire from family life. So he had ten sons and three of them were brahmacharis, completely celibate. The, the other seven, they got married. And they took up some responsibility in overseeing the affairs of the universe. Okay, so then what happened next was uh, so because they didn't marry and because they were very controlled in their senses, they became very great saintly persons. And they took shelter of the Supreme Lord Vasudev. And they became very advanced in devotional service. So that is the, the perfection of the human life. They had no attachment for the home, they were completely detached. Because they, they have full control over their mind and senses. And they can fix their mind fully on the service to the Supreme Lord. And they develop pure love for the Lord. So, so then Priyavrata, he had another wife, one wife, because he's a king, he's very powerful, very wealthy, he, has a, he can support more than one woman, so he took another wife.
，所以他不只有一位妻子，他还有另外一位妻子。Because there's always usually more women than men. So women need to be married. So some men are very qualified. They can take more than one wife. So Maharaj Priyavrata had three sons by the second wife. And they, these were also very advanced devotees. So Maharaj Priyavrata ruled the universe for a very long time. Millions of years of our time. Because remember, our our time, in, compared to Brahma, Brahma lives one hundred years. One day of Brahma is many, many millions of years of our time. So Priyavrata is the grandson of Brahma, so he also lived a long time. And he was very powerful. He had very powerful arms, and anybody who would break the religious principles, they would have to run in fear for him. So Priyavrata he had very strong attachment for his wife. His wife was a very, very beautiful woman. And his wife knew how to attract Priyavrata. She dressed herself very beautifully. She would smile at him and she would look, look glance at, look at him and laugh at him and, and she would increase Priyavrata's desires to enjoy her. So although Priyavrata was a great soul, with, when he was with his wife, he behaved just like an ordinary man. He became completely attached to his wife. And so because he, in Priyavrata he has a, a big position, so he, he needs a wife to keep him, to give him energy, to encourage him. Priyavrata was very strict. He was very strict in maintaining the universe. He didn't let people break the law. But, but he himself was very weak in the hands of his wife when he was with his wife. So his wife was a great encouragement to him. We see that when men have a when men have a big job, a big position, big responsibility, they need to have a very uh, good wife with them to encourage them. 
我们看到，当一位男子他有非常好的工作，地位很高，他的职责很重的时候，就需要有优秀的妻子来鼓励他。We have a saying. They say behind every great man, there's a greater woman. Right, because that woman, she gives power to that man to do his duty. So especially if you're in politics or some kind of material life, enjoying karma, you need to have a good wife. So Priyavrata's wife, she was very expert in pleasing her husband. She pleased him by dressing very nicely and by smiling at him nicely, and her different feminine features to attract him. So although Priyavrata was actually a liberated soul, a great soul, it appeared like he was just under the control of his wife. <laughs> so that's a way of material life, like that. So just to understand the power of Priyavrata, Srila Vyasadeva has described here some, what some of the activities of Priyavrata. So when, when Priyavrata was ruling the universe, one time he became this, he wasn't satisfied with how the sun is going around the, how the sun is lighting up the universe. The, the sun god has a chariot and he's going around the Sumeru mountain to light up the different planets in the universe. But when the sun is on the northern side, then the southern side is in darkness. And when the sun is on the southern side, the north side is in darkness. So Priyavrata didn't like this. He decided to make daylight everywhere. Yeah, he decided where it was, where it was night, he would make it daylight. So he followed the, the sun god, the sun god was in his chariot, and he followed on his chariot. Because he was, Priyavrata was almost as powerful as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Because he had worshipped, he had worshipped the Supreme Personality of Godhead, so he became also very powerful. So he became also very powerful. 
And so also from this, this, from this information, we can learn that the sun is not fixed in one place, that the sun actually moves around the universe. We, people sometimes think the sun is fixed in one place and all the planets are rotating around the sun, but it's not like that in the Vedas. No, the, the sun moves for six months on the northern side of the Sumeru mountain. And then it moves six months on the southern side of the Sumeru mountain. So it's when, when it's summer he, here in the north, then it's winter in the south. Just like now is summer here, we're in the northern hemisphere. But if you go to Australia, New Zealand, now it's winter. So Maharaj Priyavrata had a very powerful chariot, but he was not trying to compete with the sun. He just wanted to benefit the people in the material existence. So we see some, we see in the months of April and May that the sun is very pleasing. And similarly in October and November, the morning and evening, the sun gives more warmth. So Maharaj Priyavrata was very powerful. Another thing which he did was when he drove his chariot behind the sun, the rim, the rim, you know the rim, the, the, the wheel of the chariot has a rim, the rims on his chariot wheels, they made impressions, they made, they made, uh, they made uh, some track on, on, the, on, the, on the surface and that, these tracks became oceans, it became filled with water. So in this way that the different planets in the in the middle of the universe they became divided into seven different islands. In the Vedas, sometimes the planets which are in outer space, they're compared to islands. So although, although the planets are in space, they're like an island in the ocean of the space. So Priyavrata drove his chariot behind the sun 
and he created these seven different oceans. So uh, these different planets, they're, they're all in what's called Bhu Mandala. Yeah. Right, there's different levels of planets in the universe. One is called Bhu Bhuman, Bhuloka, and Bhuvarloka. First you have Bhuloka, and then Bhuvarloka, and then above Bhuvarloka is Swargaloka. Just like when we chant the Gayatri Mantra, we chant Om Bhur Bhuvar Swatat. Sabitu varinyam, like that, right? Om bur buvar. These are the swar. Om bur buvar swatat. These are the different planets. There's the planet system of buloka, and then buvar loka, and then swarga loka. So, Swarga Loka means the heavenly planets where Indra lives. And all these different planets, all these different planets, they're under the control of the sun god. And so when we chant the Gayatri Mantra, some people they are worshipping the sun god. So we said Priyavrata created these seven, he created these seven islands. So the, the water around each of them is different, different liquid, different liquids around each of the islands. Yeah, there's an ocean of salt water. And there's an ocean of sugar cane juice. Then there's an ocean of uh, alcohol, liquor. Then there's another ocean of cl butter, clarified butter, ghee. And then there's one of milk. And then yogurt. And there's another one of sweet water. So these different islands are surrounded by these different oceans. So Priyavrata gave these different islands to his different sons to rule. And then he got his daughter married also. He gave his daughter to get married and she married Sukracharya, who is the guru of the demons. Yeah, Sukracharya is very powerful. It's mentioned in the 10th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Mm. 
So Maharaj Priyavrata, uh, he was a pure devotee and he was transcendental to the different positions of material life. Just a minute. So, so Maharaj Priyavrata, has, he's, he's not subject to the miseries of material life. Because he'd taken shelter of the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord. He conquered his mind and senses. And Srila Vyasadeva states here that even a person who may not even have any good birth, he may be untouchable, but if he takes shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord, he can also get free of material life. Actually, Sukadeva Goswami is speaking to Maharaj Parikshit and he tells him that even if the person is low born, if he utters the holy name of the Lord once, he can get free from material life. So Sukadeva Goswami was thinking that maybe Maharaj Parikshit won't believe that Priyavrata could be so powerful. So Sukadeva Goswami tells him that even a, a, a person who has no caste, who has no position in society, they can also be liberated from the material life just by once chanting the holy name of the Lord. The Supreme Lord can do everything. He's very powerful. He can do anything he likes. And the pure devotee can also follow the power of the Supreme Lord. So it's the power of devotional service that you get so much benefit. If you do devotional service properly, it can become very powerful. So it doesn't matter where you're born, what position you're born in. The important thing is what you do, 
how you act, what consciousness you have. Some people say you have to be born a Brahmana to become a Brahmana. But anybody can become a Brahmana if they follow the instruction of the spiritual master. This is stated in the scriptures. So we may not see the we may not see the gross body, the material body changing, but the subtle body changes. Yeah, the subtle body, the mind, the mind is very prominent in the subtle body. The mind changes the more we're thinking of the lotus feet of the Lord. So even a low-born person can become a brahmana simply by taking initiation. So after some time, Maharaj Priyavrata began to consider about his position and he remembered how he had fully surrendered to Narada Muni and he was trying to be, be Krishna conscious. And he, he was wondering how, how did he get entangled in all these material activities, having wives and children. So he became interested again in renouncing. In the scriptures it says, sometimes people may take to devotional service and they may get difficulty, they may fall down, they may give up the practice. But, after some time, they will again come back and continue. There's no loss on their part. They tried, but they, they may have had, they had some difficulty. But if, but if somebody's not a devotee, even if it doesn't matter what they're doing material life, they don't get, you know, it's all, whatever they gain in the material life, it's all finished with the body. So, it, it, it's not, it doesn't matter that a person may get some difficulty, but they've not, if they come to Krishna consciousness and they do some service, it's eternal benefit for them. So Priyavrata was like that, he, he was doing his devotional service, he was in the mountain, he was doing with Narada Muni, but then he came back to the material world and he got into married life and children, but he, he cannot remain in that family life, he knows he has to leave it. Priyavrata 
方就是这样，他在他在山里头和拿尔德穆尼一起进行了奉献服务，之后他又返回家，从事了物质的生活，结婚生了孩子。但是他不能停留在这样的物质生活当中，他知道自己必须要离开他。So he wants to prepare himself to go back to Godhead. So he wants to he's going to give up his、uh, material situation. 他就准备回归神手，所以他就要放弃自己的物质地位。So in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes that somebody may practice yoga for a long time, and they may not be successful. They may still have some difficulty, and they may fall down, but they will take birth in a very good family. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes that somebody may practice yoga for a long time, and they may not be successful. They may still have some difficulty, and they may fall down, but they will take birth in a very good family. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes that somebody may practice yoga for a long time, and they may not be successful. They may still have some difficulty, and they may fall down, but they will take birth in a very good family. 以失败告终，但是之后他会投身在一个非常好的、良好的家庭。Yeah, they'll take birth in a, a family, a family, they will perfect their Krishna consciousness. 他们会投身于纯粹的 Brahmana 家庭，或者是富人之家，在这样的境况当中取得完美，成为 Krishna 之觉。So after some time, Priyavrata gave up. This family life, and he took up again his Krishna consciousness. 过了一段时间 ，Priyavrata 放弃了家庭生活，再次接受了 Krishna 之觉。He was beginning. He was offering obeisances to this guru and following the direction. Priyavrata was doing all. He never. Priyavrata never forgot his guru. He he was always doing remembering his guru, but just somehow he got into material life by the order of Lord Brahma and superiors. So Prabhupada explains the rich man and the poor man; they're both under the influence of the material energy. So somebody's got more facility to enjoy, like the rich man; he enjoys the material life more than the poor man. But they're both both the rich man and the poor man are still in the material world. So, Priyavrata, the, the the thinking of Priyavrata is described in Srimad Bhagavatam. It tells he's he's thinking that oh, I'm so foolish. I have become attached to sense gratification. But then Priyavrata said, "Now I've had enough. I'm not going to enjoy this any more." I'm not going to be a, a monkey, a dance monkey in the hands of my wife. So Priyavrata understood his situation, and he knew what he had to do. Priyavrata 王就明白了自己的处境，他也知道自己该何去何从。So modern today, people cannot even understand how powerful Priyavrata was. That he was, he could do all these wonderful things. 现代人他们不能够理解 Priyavrata。But we can understand 
Priyavrata was not only powerful, powerful materially, but he was also powerful spiritually. He, he could give up everything. He could give up beautiful wife. He could leave a bit powerful kingdom. Like give up all this opulence. So not easy to give up all these things. So this shows that Priyavrata had the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Mm. When you have a beautiful wife and a beautiful home and money, and then you don't want to give them up, you become very attached. But Priyavrata had been trained by Narada Muni, so he could become, he became Krishna conscious. So he divided up all his possessions among his sons. And he gave up all the attachment to his wife. And he made his heart made his heart full of hearing the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And in this way he became again Krishna conscious. Right? Our heart is not meant for keeping the attachment to the family members and to the beautiful women. Our heart is meant to be attached to Krishna. So we have to put Krishna in the heart. Just like Maharaj Ambarish, he had Krishna in his heart, fixed his mind on Krishna. So, when one desires to advance in spiritual life, we have to give up attachment to material opulence. Wealth and women are the big problem in making spiritual advancement. But Priyavrata managed to get free of them. Because he'd been trained by Narada Muni. So the activities of Priyavrata are glorified even today by great sages. No one could do what he did. No one but the Supreme Lord could do what he did. Mm. 
also follow the example of Priya, the wife of Priyavrata to please their husband, to encourage their husband to to make achievement. And this is the first part. And the second part is that um, uh, what, how to um, different make this uh, sense of gratification um, and uh, proper uh, um, spiritual progress activity. Mm. Well, we said in the lives of great men, somebody, somebody's very, very important work and, you know, a very big position and like that. And so then they need to be encouraged because it can be very demanding. Of, of course, it's very difficult, even for ordinary men, difficult to maintain the family responsibility for the wife and the child. They have to work hard all day, so they need to be encouraged. So the wife, is her duty, one of her, the duties of being a wife is to encourage the husband. Arba? So the wife should always dress very nicely for her husband, to attract her husband. And when the husband's away from home, then the wife won't dress nicely and she will simply stay at home and she will dress very plain. So when, when the wife encourages the husband, then the husband will be happy, he will appreciate family life. Yeah, he won't be attracted to other women. If the, hus if the wife is always well decorated, dressed very nicely and smiles and makes him happy, then the husband won't look to other women. But if, if the wife is always complaining and criticizing and nasty to the husband, then the husband won't like the home life. So today, that's why there's so much divorce. Women are not trained how to please the husband. So they please the husband like this by dressing nicely, by making, keeping themselves attractive and speaking nice words to him. Mm. 
Does it make sense to you? Dropadi. And also the second part of the question is that uh, how to carry out the activity that is not belong to the category of sense gratification, but uh, the activity of uh, promoting spiritual progress. Oh yes, well, in family in family life, you promote spiritual progress by doing things like worship of the Supreme Lord. Husband and wife together, they can worship the Lord. Just like we do Harinam, we do Sankirtan, we do Kirtan at home. So husband and wife and family members together, they can worship the Lord and make spiritual advancement. And they can organize <laughs> okay. So, uh, of course, husband's duty is to work hard, to uh, be able to take care of the wife nicely. And he has to give her Krishna conscious children. And they have to keep the home Krishna conscious. Usually householders will keep a deity in the home. Or, or at least they will have an altar with pictures. And they should worship nicely. They should do nice worship. So this way they make advancement. How, householders also have the duty to invite guests to bring saintly devotees to their home. And to hear from them, to get spiritual instruction from them. They shouldn't just live at home together, eat themselves. They must always have people coming to eat in their home. So we often see couples, they get married and then they're living together and they're cooking up every day and the two of them get very fat after some time because they're just cooking and eating together, the two of them, and they never invite any guests to come and eat. We see 
这种现象，就是夫妻两个人在家里头，整天在那里做饭，然后吃，但结果呢，越来越胖，因为他们从来不邀请别人。So when householders ask Prabhupada, what should they do? How? What was their duty? He said, whenever they cook food, they have to call out, food is now ready. Anybody who wants to eat, please come, take food. When Prabhupada said, when he was a young boy, in his home every day there were four or, or six guests every night. Yeah. Okay. Does that answer? I know. Any more questions? How you went, Tima? <laughs> but sure. Okay. The eager Shashama. The next one? Yeah. Jaya Krishna. The Venti. Omo. So this Ruho Chongo. Sumeru Shan Sinchu. Mayo Hei. Yung Yuan Shi Bai Tian Ma. Ding Bai Hu the Ling Hazu. The question is that. How, how the, for the demon to perform yagya, how to mm, make it successful? The, this is the first one. Yeah, the okay, first one. How can the demon make the yagya successful? Yes. Well, just like Prahlad Maharaj, do you, when you mean demon, do you mean one born in a demon family? Or do you mean one who has a demon mentality? Just like Prahlad and Bali, you know, they were born in a demon family, but they're devotees. Of course, Haranyakashipu, he was a demon and he would do yagya. He would have himself worship. He would worship himself. He would not worship the Supreme Lord. So they can never be successful like that. Aribo? It's uh, broken, the, yeah. the later part. So Haranyakashipu, demons who worship themselves cannot be successful. So So we want to be successful in a yagya, we have to worship the Supreme Lord. We say Yagya Vai Vishnu. Lord Vishnu is the enjoyer of all Yagya. So we, we want to be successful in the performance of a Yagya, a sacrifice. We have to worship Lord Vishnu. Even if you're a demon, you have to worship Lord Vishnu. Almost sing tighter and do Jesus. Well, somebody whose state of mind is demoniac and he's doing a yagya. 
how to make it successful. Well, the one who is doing the yajna, he should chant the holy name. If he's not devotee to the Supreme Lord, his yajna cannot be successful. But what, what is success? Do you want material result or spiritual result? If you want material result, then demon can give you material result. But if you want material prosperity, you want to enjoy material life, the demon can do yagya to help you enjoy material life. But devotee doesn't want to enjoy material life, a devotee simply wants Krishna consciousness. So if you do a yagya, you should have a devotee do it. Just like cooking, cooking is a yagya. Cooking should be done by someone who is a devotee. Eat the food cooked by devotees. Okay. How you want to? The second part of in the question is that in the Sumeru, in the planet where Sumeru Mountain situated, there is no night. Uh, it's eternally daytime. Is it? Is that right? Well, Priya, Priya Vrata wanted to make it like that. For, so for, for some part of the time, he made it like that, yeah. You can inquire if you have something you want to ask about, then certainly you can approach the spiritual teacher and ask about it. Haribo? Next question. The next question. No, second part. That, but if if you if you don't have any any particular idea to inquire, then you just do nice service and wait and see if the spiritual master gives you some instruction. It's important, actually, you should, better that you ask yourself, you come yourself and inquire. Next question. 
Okay. The woman doesn't want to get married, you're saying. Yes, the Madhaji, because economically uh, independent, the Madhaji would rather not enter into very boring and uh, changeable uh, family life. And, and also, she asked you how to regard this phenomenon. And the second part of the question is that if the astrology predicts the Madhaji will definitely enter into fam family life, but the Madhaji doesn't want to marry, only want to love Krishna and do better service, will Krishna satisfy the Madhaji's spiritual desire? This is a question. <laughs> okay. So, the Mataji doesn't, she thinks family life would be boring. Well, it doesn't have to be boring. Sometimes, you see, the point is that women need to be protected. And if a woman is not married, then there's no one to protect her. Her, her elderly parents are not going to be able to protect her. So it's usually recommended that women should get married and have a man, a mature man, who will res protect her. Also, women have the ability to give birth to children, and Krishna conscious children are needed for the, the, the world. So, if you go to a child and raise a child to be a devotee, that's very good. It's a very great service. And most most women, they find that being a woman is very boring. Haribo? Haribo, the next question? No, we're not finished yet. Uh, so, so. Uh, yes, the, the, the second. Yes, Maharaj? Yeah, we, we, usually women find if they're alone, it's boring for them. They prefer to be married. And if the, the second part, if the astrology says that you have a good compatibility with a man, then you, you should consider seriously if you, to, to enter into married life. It's usually better for a woman to be married. Unless you're very strong in Krishna consciousness. Unless you're very strong in Krishna consciousness. 
and you should have association with other single ladies. Yeah, there should be ladies of similar age who are also not married. And they should also, they also have to be devotees. Then you may be able to please Krishna. If you fully engage yourself in devotional service. Yeah. Did I answer it okay? Yes, you have answered her questions. How you want him? <laughs> I said that there's a, a behind every great man there's a greater woman. So this devotee is asking who's behind the brahmachari? Huh? Behind every, no, uh, behind every great man, there's a greater woman, meaning oh. that, you know, the man, the man gets a lot of help from his wife. So he's asking who's behind the brahmachari? Yes. Radharani. Okay, how you went, Tima? Well, there doesn't have to be any difference. It's the same culture, the same p principle. We're describing the austerity of the body in the mode of goodness. So Chinese culture also like to appreciate that mode of goodness. Prabhupada said, China culture, Indian culture have many similarities.
Mm, so this is one of them. They both give respect for the older people. In the Western culture, they don't have that. Old people, if you're old, you're useless. Nobody has any interest in you. Okay, how you went, Tima? Uh -huh. A married 